Hello everybody, this is Kendall Sin. I am the writer and director of this big experiment that we call Smoke Break. Um, this has a long evolution to this story uh, that started about 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, it started off as a feature film about uh, when I was about 19. I was in the Navy and uh, it was late 90s and mid 90s and this was kind of my uh, Clerks. Clerks was all the rage at the moment, you know, with Kevin Smith. And uh, I was like, well, I could do that. You know, I could make a movie about people talking. Uh, and, and again, I was in the Navy, so it all kind of formulated based on uh, smoke breaks that we were taking, you know, out on the ship or on base or something like that, you know. I mean, uh, in the military, you do one of two things. You're either working or you're smoking. Um, or you're drinking, and I've never really been much of a drinker, but uh, but I, I I did smoke a lot of cigarettes. So, the conversations that took place were, you know, really fun. Uh, at least you think they are. You look back on it in rose-colored glasses, and you think, oh, that's hysterical. I'm going to write all that down. So I did. I started writing it all down, and I just filed it away. I wrote probably. I I actually bought a typewriter in Japan, and. Uh, started typing out this long, you know, just a, a stream of consciousness of jokes. And, you know, that was at 19 years old, and I come back to it. Uh, the next evolution of the show was about 15 years later. Now, all of a sudden, I'm older. I have a wife. I have a child, you know, stuff like that. And I've, I've made a, a, too many short films that, of course, went nowhere. And a couple of features and uh, things like that. And I kind of pulled this out of the drawer. And I was like, well, this will still be fun. Um, as most people know, in 2001, 2002, I was one of the early adopters of the web series. I kind of had the idea, hey, I'm going to make a web series. And I'm going to you know, put it out on for free on the Internet. And this was before YouTube or Vimeo or anything like that. And, and uh, that was Shadow Falls. And if you look hard enough, you can find that somewhere on the Internet. But after that experience and the fact that it kind of went nowhere, I, uh, I, I, I kind of went away from web series. And then I started to notice that people were actually making a lot of web series, and a lot of them were very successful, or at least to varying degrees of success. And I was like, well, this is kind of a fun, neat thing. So now, flash forward, it's four years ago, and... I went to uh, a Denny's and just started writing all this stuff down on paper based on those pages that I'd written in the Navy. And as an adult, um, also again with children, in good consciousness, I could not produce the pages that I wrote in the Navy because, well, there's a reason why there's the expression, curse like sailors. And, uh, and a cliche is a cliche because it's generally true, and that was generally true. And it also lacked any form of maturity whatsoever. I say all this, I tell poop jokes in this throughout. And so don't think I'm getting on a high horse and saying, you know, anything about me being mature. So when I say that the first, you know, 100 pages of the script I wrote 15 years ago was immature... It was really immature and extremely vulgar and uh, probably would have sold better. But and I kind of went back and revised and I kind of figured out what kind of characters I want and what kind of stuff I wanted in the show. And I decided to go a little bit older and a little bit more um, how I feel now. Uh, so that's kind of where the, where, where the story went. Um, hence, now we're into episode two here that we're watching and... Yeah, this is like a real conversation that I think I've had in my life uh, about, you know, with the marriage and stuff like that. I remember when I got married, you know, my wife started asking me all these different questions. Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we do this? All these different things. And I was like, you know what? Just just tell me where to be and I'll be there. You know, because guys, we don't care. Like we genuinely, we don't care. Women, they care a lot about the wedding and God love you for it because we don't want to do it. Um. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's this episode. Uh, I did write the script, the first probably 80 pages of the script. The script turned out to be about 350 pages. And the first 80 pages were written, again, four years ago. 
uh, I went back through after finishing it and kind of revised it a little bit. Like I added Allison early in the episode. I added Chris. These are characters that become really, really important later. And uh, Abby, I came back and added her because she kind of becomes a love interest or does become a love interest. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like when you make a mystery, you have to introduce the killer in the first act. And I hadn't introduced our love interest in the first act. And if this is someone you need to care about for 115 episodes, well, you better introduce her. Um, so that is what that the first week kind of got rewritten a lot. Uh, Chris was kind of the same way. The character of the bumbling, crazy character of Chris was kind of similar to where I had to go back in and add him because originally he didn't come in until about week four or five. And he kind of added an element of mystery to the show that I hoped would keep people watching uh, just to find out what the hell's wrong with him. And, and believe me, it's explained and it goes into great detail. Not great detail, but it, it goes into detail as to what is wrong with Chris. So you have to keep watching because that's not until, uh, you know, week 22. Um, and everything, structurally, everything that I had revolves around that weekly episodic formula. So... Every week, there's a little bit of an arc. So there's a beginning to the week. On Monday's episode, we kind of introduce what we're going to be talking about that week. And then there's a little bit of a cliffhanger that leads on Friday that leads into the next Monday where we end the conflict of the previous week and start this week's conflict. And when I say conflict, I just mean a story. Um, You'll see that in the first six or seven weeks we're really significantly lacking in story. You know, you don't know anything about these characters. You don't know any such thing. And that was very much by design because I figured it was, you know, people weren't going, it was going to take a long time to build an audience. And so I kind of made compact episodic stories. And the only thing that really mattered was, the beginning and the end of each episode. So the end of the episode, I had to give you some reason to come back the very next day. Uh, again, this is this is all 100% winging it and 100% making it up as we went along. Um, there was no... I mean, there was a plan, uh, but there is absolutely no evidence that this plan works because nobody has tried this. There have been lots and lots of people who've made a lot of videos for YouTube. These are mostly talking to the camera. These are mostly little skits. Uh, Things like that. Nobody, at least to my knowledge, has been foolish enough to say, well, I'm going to make 115 episodes of a continuing story. Nobody's been that dumb yet. I, luckily or unluckily for you, am that dumb. So I went in and I, you know, it it does have an actual story and most of that is introduced at the very beginning. Uh, They start making a reference a lot to what the significance of today is. Uh, because this all takes place on one day. It's the beginning of their day all the way to the end. Like, the very last shot of the show is basically the store closing. You know, I mean, the, the, the end of the day at Pinadine. Which, if any of you have any interest in my career as a writer, uh, Pinadine was a company in a script that I've pretty much spent the last five years optioning. You know, it was just, I, it was, I'll option it and then it will, you know, come back to me and then I'll option it again to somebody else and it'll go on and on and on. I very rarely make it to a second or third option because it's a hard movie to make. It's a, uh, a, somebody had hired me to write a zombie movie and then they didn't make it, so I've just kind of kept it going. Anyway, Pinadine is the company that is in that movie and I won't spoil it as what that company does, but later on there will actually be subtle little references to that uh not that in it like i said maybe 30 people have read that screenplay i don't know 30 50 who knows how many people have read that screenplay but uh it's fun for me it keeps it interesting to me um going through because you'll find when you're writing a 350 page script you do a lot of things just to amuse yourself just to keep you going and that was something that i was doing here was it was just something to keep me going and i thought it was funny you know i just thought it was funny that there was uh that that this uh basically zombie corporation uh, is where these guys worked. And if you'd read that script, this is hysterical. So for the 10 people out there who are listening to this, who also read that script, you are finding this hysterical. Um, 
for the rest of you, the joke isn't even there. Speaking of some, the joke that isn't even there, uh, something that kind of got cut down was the janitor's role, just because it was something that was very hard to fit in. It's there, I have the footage, and I'm going to use it throughout. And you'll notice it, and maybe after me explaining it here, you'll find it a little bit more humorous. Uh, but we really wanted to keep it going through the entire show, that they have a janitor out in this courtyard, and his basically his entire job is to clean up cigarette butts, because nobody uses the ashtray. So, frequently, you'll see somebody flick a cigarette or something, and then the janitor come in and sweep it up, and he's very disgruntled and hates his life because of it. Um... And you'll see that more as it comes in. But here in the earlier episodes, it just kind of got in the way of pacing. And uh, I really tried to not detour people from watching as much as possible. So it was hard. It was a hard thing to cut to. Uh, but uh, And that was just part of our shooting schedule and the way that we had to angle things and stuff like that. And uh, and you always have to keep telling yourself it's a TV show. You know, it's uh, every everything. It's not about the set. It's not about anything like that. It's It's about the characters and their dialogue. So uh, we kept kind of trying to hold on people. Um, anyway, this is the first week commentary, and I'm going to get more into detail and stuff in further weeks. But uh, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, complaints, anything, in, anything at all, leave them in the comment section below, uh, either of this episode or other episodes of this commentary or other episodes, anything along that nature. Just leave a comment, and uh, this is where we'll be answering those comments. I want to know what you think, and... I want to answer any questions that you have, so please drop us a line and let us know, and every week we'll try to answer those questions. Thanks!